Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome to Science Faith Connection, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Fuzrana, and we're going to be looking at the issue of finding soft tissues in dinosaur fossils. Buzz, good to have you here today. Jeff, thanks for having me. So uh, this is a, a topic of young earth, old earth creationism. That's been a, a longstanding discussion in the Christian community. And uh, kind of what's brought it somewhat uh, more prominence recently is the discovery of soft tissues in dinosaurs. And so I thought it'd be fun to just have a discussion with you about what's the scientific data surrounding that and what do dinosaurs have to do with the age of the earth? So I guess first question I'll, I'll throw your way is, um, when scientists look at dinosaur fossils, why do they think they're millions of years old? Yeah, well, you know, uh, the scientific community, uh, you know, has presented data that indicates that dinosaurs lived on Earth between 225 million years ago and about 65 million years ago, actually populating three different geological eras, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous uh, window of time. And the reason why scientists believe that dinosaurs, again, are millions of years old is on the basis of radiometric dating, where they use a, a variety of different radiometric techniques to age date the strata that the dinosaur fossils are discovered in. And this work indicates, again, that dinosaurs are, you know, between 65 and 225 million years ago in, or in, in, in age. So, you know, there's overwhelming evidence towards that end that's largely predicated on radiometric dating methods. Well, it, it seems like there's two aspects of that that indicates that, that at least dinosaurs lived long before humanity was around. One is the radiometric age dating of the strata. But if I get what you're saying, there's also the dinosaur only appear in certain strata. And so there's also it's, it's like there's two lines of evidence. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, yes, exactly. And for example, uh, you know, the, the three different windows of time where dinosaurs appear have unique dinosaurs, for example, in the Triassic, unique dinosaurs in the Jurassic and in the Cretaceous. And, and the, these dinosaurs, again, as you mentioned, show up in, in characteristic strata. So there's an overwhelming collection of evidence, again, for dinosaurs being you know, somewhere between 65 and 225 million years ago, depending upon the, the particular dinosaur in question. Uh, and and uh, uh, the, the radiometric dating methods are absolute methods, whereas the dating using the strata are relative methods, but those relative methods are reliable because they are anchored on in the absolute methodology of radiometric dating. Well, okay, so uh, it, it seems like there does, as when I look at it in the scientific community, there's very little discussion of what the ages of these are. It seems like the scientific data really does point to those being millions of years old. And so that let's make this discovery of soft tissues in dinosaur fossils very interesting. Because so kind of explain what is it that's been found that is soft tissues and why is that startling if the earth is actually six and a half, 65 million years old or dinosaurs were 65, lived 65 million years ago? Yeah, well, um, the, the paradigm in paleontology for a long time is that what's going to be preserved are going to be the hard anatomical portions of, of organisms that the soft tissue materials will degrade away uh, much more rapidly than the fossilization process can take place. Uh, and we understand why that's the case, uh, because soft tissue materials are highly vulnerable to degradation from water in the environment, from oxygen in the environment, as well as environmental enzymes and, and microorganisms. So but before you go on there, just to clarify, what would be the kind of give a distinction between soft tissue and, and hard tissue? What would be some differences there? Well, the hard tissue would essentially be the skeletal materials of the organisms uh, or the shells. If, if you're looking at organisms that have shells, those are the, the parts that are going to be preserved. Maybe occasionally impressions uh, of the soft tissue material might be preserved in the fossil record but the actual remnants of the soft tissue itself, according to the standard paradigm, will not be preserved. And, and, and this 
uh, whole paradigm was called into question uh, thanks to the pioneering work of Mary Schweitzer, who is a paleontologist currently at North Carolina State University, where I think in 2003, uh, she and her team reported uh, the discovery of uh, basically blood vessel remnants, red blood cell remnants, and molecular remnants associated with those structures uh, uh, in a dinosaur femur that dates at about 65 million years in age. And this was uh, completely unexpected, but the evidence that she presented is very compelling towards that end. And so this literally overturned uh, the paradigm. And since that time, there have been a large number of soft tissue remnants that have been discovered, not only in association with dinosaur fossils, but with a wide range of other fossilized organisms. The, the world's record is the, the recovery of chitin remnants uh, in sponges that date uh, around 500 million years in age. So these would be sponges that would have been on Earth at the time of the Cambrian explosion. And so this is absolutely remarkable to think that soft tissue material could survive for that length of time. Uh, and, and so the way that young earth creationists think about this is that we know these soft tissue materials can't survive that long. And because they have, that means the fossils must be thousands of years old, not millions of years old. And therefore radiometric dating methods are in effect unreliable. Yeah, so so that that has actually a pretty remarkable claim and a, and a pretty remarkable discovery, if I say so. I mean, uh, there's not too often where you just find something that is just entirely unexpected, and you know, at, at least at a first glance, the idea that we're finding soft tissues. I mean, this is like blood cells and skin. I assume that's the sort of stiff stuff that we're talking about there. The fact that we're finding those sorts of tissues that really does seem to lend a lot of credence to the idea that the earth is a few thousand years old, else why would you still have this stuff around? So how do we, how as an old earth creationist do you wrestle with that data? Yeah, well, it goes back to the point we made earlier, and that is there's absolutely no reason to think that radiometric dating is unreliable. Uh, and what this discovery indicates is not that radiometric dating is unreliable, it's that the paradigm that paleontologists were operating under with regard to preservation of soft tissue materials is essentially an invalid paradigm. And, and since that time, people have worked out how is it possible for these soft tissue materials to survive? And the first point to make here is that the environment for fossilization is really important. Certain environments lend themselves to preservation of soft tissue materials, other environments do not. Uh, and it's also important to recognize that these scientists are not discovering blood vessels and red blood cells, but they're, re they're discovering the remnants of these materials uh, where the chemical composition is changed from the original composition. It's just that the morphology of these materials is retained. Uh, and then also uh, we, we come, have come to understand that certain materials, uh, molecular materials are much more likely to be preserved that because they're inherently more durable than other materials. We also have discovered that there's mechanisms that will alter these soft tissue materials and convert them into com compounds that are much more durable than even the original materials themselves. And then finally, if these materials can be encased in a mineral entombment, uh, that actually arrests the, the, the degradation process and allows them to be preserved for vast periods of time. So it's a combination of factors that have to be just right, but uh, we, we now have a good understanding of what those are and can readily explain you know, uh, soft tissue material in, in fossil remains. It's not a mystery uh, as to why these things have been preserved. You know, the, the, uh, your, your discussion there, uh, just one of the comments you made st stands out to me as a pretty remarkable thing. As you said, when, when, when in confronted with this, the scientists had to realize that their paradigm needed to change. That's not a small statement, uh, you know, because a lot of times it's, 
it, the, the charge has been, oh, scientists are just set in their ways. They already know what they want to find. And so they stay there. So this idea that they're actually willing to change, radically change how they look at something that seems so straightforward, that soft tissues don't stick around, that really is a pretty remarkable change. Uh, what, what are your comments to that? Yeah, th that's very much the case. And you know, to be clear, when Mary Schweitzer reported her discovery, there were a lot of skeptics that, that simply, uh, because of the power of the paradigm, refused to believe that, that you know, what she had found actually was le legitimate and authentic. But over time, as, as she has continued to build a case for the authenticity of her discoveries, other people have jumped in and have made similar types of discoveries so today, I don't think anybody questions the recovery of soft tissue in, in fossils as being out of bounds or out of question. But the paradigm, uh, you know, did slow, you know, uh, people were resistant to the discovery because of the paradigm. But when the evidence was there, uh, they were willing to, to change the perspective. They're willing to acknowledge that this was a flawed approach to, uh, you know, the, the, the taphonomy of, of fossil burial. Thanks, Fuzz. I really appreciate your comments. You know, Christians are still divided over what the age of the earth is, and there are Christians who say that it's thousands of years, and many Christians who say that it's millions of years. And, and what I love about this discussion of dinosaur uh, soft tissues and the remnants and the, and the impressions of them is that it helps us provide more data and really have a robust discussion of how old is the earth and what does that have implications for the authority of scripture? You know, I would encourage you to go check out Fuzz's book. Go to reasons.org and look up Dinosaur Blood and the Age of the Earth. It will give you a great insight into this particular uh, issue and how it can be used to support not only that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, but more importantly, that the God who is the author and inspiration for scripture is behind it all, that he cares about everybody and wants to reveal himself to you.